One of the most impressive and under the radar features a watch can have, period, is tritium loom. Historically only found in a few expensive brands, like ball watches out of the US, it's actually starting to trickle its way down the market. Recently, even AliExpress brands have gotten their hands on the tritium and the ability to export it somehow. Sadly, most of them haven't quite struck gold with their designs or their incorporation of tritium into them, but that might change with the Yilong V1010. This watch, which is strangely marketed as a women's watch, is really a great example of a classic field watch and a great use of tritium. So is this the intersection of price, tritium, and understated styling that many of us have been waiting for, especially from AliExpress brands? So let's take a first look at this watch. As you can see, pretty simple finishing all around and pretty simple case design. Um, I do like those downturned angular lugs though, that gives a bit of a sporty look. Combined with those polished elements, I think it really does a good job being somewhere in between sporty and dressy. I think you can wear this to the office just as well as you could wear it out to the pool. Sapphire crystal on there. Sterile case back with the Ronda quartz, or at least that's what it says. This butterfly clasp isn't my favorite deployment method, but the bracelet is actually very high quality. For the price point, I think the bracelet's pretty great. As you can see here, the star of the day is that tritium. There's no anti-reflective coating on it, but that's fine. Really great tritium, different color at 12 o'clock. Beyond that, it's a silver dial with white hands, so as you can see as the light hits it, the combination of no undercoating and that color combination makes this not exactly the most legible in the daytime. Of course, in the nighttime, or in any level of darkness, that tritium is going to be your best friend. So let's take a little bit of a closer look. Starting right off with value, I only need one word to describe this watch as value. Tritium, and that T100. For the $130 I paid for this bracelet version, that's pretty much unheard of, and it's as simple as that. The other specs could all be terrible, and it would still be good value. But that isn't the case. The rest of the watch is pretty well made. There's sapphire, and there's decent water resistance, and even a good bracelet. That being said, there is a big drawback. It has a 1 hertz quartz movement, which you can see in the video here, but it does hit all the ticks. So it really is great value and hard to argue with it. One thing about the watch that isn't necessarily as amazing is the case. It's nothing to phone home about. It's really classic. It has a brushed bezel. It has polished sides and a polished lug. And not much to talk about. I mean, there's a downturn to the lugs that's quite angular and makes it look pretty sporty, which I think looks great, especially combined with some of the more dressy elements like the polishing on the bracelet. And there's a heavily knurled crown at two o'clock which might turn some people off, but I think it's small enough where it fits in well. There's really nothing to talk about. The dial isn't going to blow you away, but it does look good. There's a simple sunburst effect with circular brushing on the backdrop, and there's sword hands for both the hours and minute, and a simple pencil second hand. On display, clearly, are the tritium tubes. The hour markers are just tubes with no adornment. It actually looks quite good, especially for the field watch aesthetic. There's a different colored tritium tube at 12, and like I said earlier, there's tritium tubes for every hour marker and in both of the main hands for the watch. It really looks good, and on top of that, the second hand hits all the markers, which is important for a quartz watch. You can't talk about this watch and not talk about tritium, and here it is. As you can see, it's extremely clear. It's T100 too, so it'll last a long time, and during that time, it'll be brighter or just as bright as T25, depending on how long into its life cycle you are. If you don't know about tritium, I have a great article about it. I can link it here. In short, it's a material that will glow for decades without stopping, completely passively. No need to charge it up by wearing it outside. It's truly a wonder, and it's the pinnacle of loom. The one thing I expected without fail was that the bracelet was going to be bad but Yilong has really surprised me here. This bracelet's actually one of the best ones I've seen for the price range. It's, it's really quite good. There's no rattle. It pulls no hairs. Of course, it has a butterfly clasp, which I would prefer not to, but um, it's maybe more of a style choice, uh, so I guess you can't fault them that much for it. Of course, what that means, there's a little less micro-adjust, which is the reason I don't really prefer it, but Moving past that, once again, not necessarily a bad thing, just a personal preference. 
polished center links brushed everything else except for the sides which are also polished it really gives an element of class to it which you know you can now wear this field watch in the office because of this bracelet pretty much and i really don't have a reason to take it off the bracelet usually with uh, watches like this you know you get the bracelet because it fits the end links right and then you know you see if it's up to your par and you replace it with leather but on this one i am not going to get rid of this this is a really nice bracelet uh and for the price i was really surprised um i think it looks great as well on screen now are all the measurements for the watch including material i raved a lot about this watch but perhaps its biggest shortcoming is it's short lug to lug if you like what i did there it has a small diameter and a short lug to lug 36 and 42 respectively but there are some good things. Notice that 100 meters of water resistance. I haven't really highlighted that. Screw down crown to make that happen as well. In just a second, you'll see it on my average 7 inch wrist, and it really does fit quite well. But I do want to highlight that if you have a large wrist, if you're approaching 8 inches, probably not the watch for you. And here it is on my average 7 inch wrist. With the small diameter and also the small lug to lug, some people might think this is a little too small, but really it's pretty much a speed spot, especially for a you know go anywhere, do anything type of style. The bracelet here you can see is a butterfly clasp once again, so there's a pretty high likelihood that you're going to be wearing it a little loose or a little tight. I got pretty lucky here, it fits me perfectly, but uh, no guarantees there. So here's the watch score. All in all, it's a pretty high score. The specs here are sort of insane, and for the price point, unmatched, simply. If you're okay with the styling, and you like the logo, then I really don't see a reason not to buy this watch. It's really great, and tritium is a really fun thing to have in your collection. I do really hope that Yilong takes the styling elements from this and adapts it to its other watches. I think that many of the designs could, let's say, improve, and this is a really big step in the right direction. So I'll be on the lookout for future Yilong watches, and maybe you should as well. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.